What's going on guys? Evan the Dark Souls Enthusiast here, bringing another Dark Souls gameplay commentary on the Xbox 360. This is going to be another installment of my LA series of videos, uh, which are finally coming to an end, at least of the walkthrough and uh, just general commentary. I suppose calling these a walkthrough is probably an exaggeration. Um, it's not even a let's play. This is just me doing post-game commentary of some of the areas I thought were cool in Dark Souls or areas I thought were particularly significant. Um, now we're doing the Crystal Cave, which is actually particularly annoying, which is why I decided to go ahead and commentate it. Um, apparently software decided it would be a really cool idea to put a level into the game where you can walk off of stuff and die in the pathways you're supposed to take or crystal, making them completely translucent. Um, or transparent, not translucent, I apologize. Uh, and there's ways to get around this, of course, built into the game, but they're all pretty annoying. It kind of ruined what I thought would have been a really cool area it's just a pain to go through here, and it it's such a cool area, like a cave made of crystal with moonlight butterflies all over it and seeth at the end, you know, a big king of the lore, but they just kind of wrecked it for me by making it such a pain to get around with having to drop prism stone and watch droplets fall off the ceiling. Um, these videos are actually heavily edited because I died a lot and fell off of stuff, and... You know, this, then, the other thing. It, pretty much everything that could go wrong when I went through the Crystal Cave this run did. Uh, that's why these videos are so long, because I'm walking around dropping prism stones, because I'm so nervous about falling off of stuff, and I really don't know why. Like, right here, you can almost safely just straight run it like this. <clears throat> I guess because once you die a couple times in an area, you start to get skeptical, and uh, in this video, I decided against better judgment that I was not going to edit out the pursuit of the blue titanite slab, which is in the crystal cave. Um, there's two ways to get it. You can find it off a body or you can kill the butterflies. Uh, the butterflies, it's a rare drop off them, so with a white serpent ring and enough humanity, you can get a pretty decent chance of it dropping in version 5. So, If you need more than one, for whatever reason, that's a good way. But <clears throat> I doubt you will. Most intelligence characters... <clears throat> excuse me. I have a bit of a cold. Most intelligence casters basically wind up using the Moonlight Greatsword because its moveset is so powerful and the damage to weight is fantastic and it gets all those varied uh, ranged attacks. Great for PvE and PvP. So, not a whole lot of love for like just magic, just enchanted weapons and stuff like that, but all the same, they're definitely an option and makes for good sidearm. Um, <clears throat> I like to use a katana. Uh, my mage build I'm working on will be using a katana and the Moonlight Greatsword in the main hand. It's going to be pretty fun. I'm going to PvP with that too. Pretty much all the character builds I do are all designed for PvP because I don't struggle with the PV PvE in Dark Souls at all. I'm just so used to it after making all these characters that, well, you know, the game's hard enough that I definitely die from time to time. It's not so challenging that I can't just get a little crazy and uh, grind through without incident. With that said, that really gives me the freedom to do whatever PvP build I want, because even if the build's awful for PvE, as long as it's PvP functional, I can make it work. <clears throat> Speaking of that, I've got some messages in my inbox talking about the uh, the bottomless box glitch, and I'm aware of it, and I know how it works, etc., etc. It's not something I want to use. I know it could bring you guys more varied uh, PvP footage if I did it to make a whole bunch of characters, but... I really can't PvP with a character unless I get personally attached to the character, and to get personally attached to them I have to take the time to grind out the build and all that kind of thing, so... I know it's a lot quicker and more convenient to bottomless box glitch, but it's, it's not really my way, so... Sorry guys, I just... I can't bring you 30 different characters uh, to PvP with. I'll just have to bring, you know, a couple different character builds, which I'll elaborate on a little bit in this video. I've got plenty of time, because... This is a really slow run through the Crystal Cave, and for that I apologize. This is the worst walk. Th well, not even walk through. This is the worst uh, commentary series ever. If you were looking for um, basically any kind of walk through or speed run, can't really give you guys that. Of course, there's a whole bunch of Crystal Geckos down here, um, up to three, I believe. But unfortunately, I didn't uh, kill them before they disappeared. So now I have to do the save load thing to make them respawn like that, and then I can wrap them away and get. You know, a bunch of green shards and tantanite chunks and twinkling tantanite and the whole nine yards. Over here is where the vast majority of this video will be spent trying to get the blue titanite slab. I'm not going to really elaborate on how to get it other than bring 99 prism stones. If you can, watch a video on YouTube about how to get there. Don't trust the drops from the ceiling. They're really deceiving when you're trying to get the tantanite slab. 
that's pretty much all there is to it. Just be patient. Um, if you really need it and you're gonna and you die a couple times for it, don't get too angry. My advice is just accept that you're getting perhaps the most valuable stone for a caster character, which really makes it worth the time if you're a caster. But I am not a caster, so it's pretty much inconsequential for me. Um, but I wanted to get it anyways, just show it in my videos, and I'll have to. I get. I always, you know, that's my problem. I'm a completionist. That's another reason it takes me so long to make every character that I make is. I insist on grabbing every drop in every area, even though most of them aren't worth getting for PvP characters, but I still insist on it, and as a result, here we are. This is another one of those examples where I'm getting an item I really have no need for. Um, but I guess being a completionist adds a... I guess in a way it adds replay value to your games, but the problem is you might not be enjoying it while you play them. It's just sort of a personality trait. But let's let's move on here. I want to talk a little bit about some other characters I'm making. I've got uh, three characters in development right now. Um, Ellie, of course, who's pretty much 99% done. She's just going to grab her second stack of Wrath of Gods, and she'll be ready to stay soul locked at 125 for the rest of her days, PvPing with her S stock, wishing that it actually could stagger people and not be such a slow grinding fight that didn't rely on Wrath of God for most of the damage. <laughs> That's a lot of negatives in one really bad run-on sentence, but. I actually really enjoy the character. For those of you that are just jumping in on this commentary series, Ellie is a faith-based weapon and caster, and she uses an s stock which is great for the backstabs and the counters off the, uh, you know, off the ripitas or whatever. I don't, I don't pronounce that. I think it's a French word. I should look that up. If anyone knows, uh, throw it in the comments. I'm too lazy to look up on dictionary.com for the pronunciation, but... It's great for like the critical strikes with a hornet's ring, or even without a hornet's ring. s dog hits really hard, but unfortunately, just for poking them with it, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. And because I only have like 14 strength and dex, I don't have a lot of options for you know other weapons and stuff like that, which is a little bit of a letdown. Probably should have planned a little better when I was designing the character, but I didn't, and that's tragic. Um, I tried to make an optimal build, but I winded up with something I really like though. Ellie's got some custom tweaks in her stats that you won't see on a lot of other characters. Probably because they're not optimally, because, you know, I just made some weird choices. Like, I'm going to be using Dark Moon Blade likely as a secondary uh, weapon, but the Dark Moon Blade is really. Like, making Dark Moon Blade characters, you really shouldn't pump Faith really high. Uh, of course, Dark Moon Blade damage scales with Faith, but you don't want to pump your Faith up to like 50 it's better to pump your dexterity or something like that than take faith to 30 and then that's how you make like your optimal damage setup with the scaling from the dex on your dex weapon and the dark moon blade is added damage and you get access to support miracles and stuff like that um, I didn't do that I just went all faith a faith all in because I originally decided I'd be a miracle caster and I didn't have a whole lot of experience with a miracle casting and I learned being a faith caster in PvP basically means you like to use Wrath of Gods, and every now and again you'll throw a Sunlight Spear. Otherwise, you'll just be using Greater Combustion. And that's tragic, um, to say the least. But, yep, and look at that fail. Got a little hasty and took too many steps forward and died for it. And that's, that's just really unfortunate, but as is the nature of the game... And after a quick edit, we're back where we started, trying to grind our way across here. Um, of course, the next character I'm working on for PvP is, his name is Ramses, and he's basically a, <coughs> excuse me, cold once again. He's basically a Black Knight build. He'll be using the Black Knight weapons. Uh, I wanted to make a character that could use a greater variety of weapons while still having a theme to him and still having something that set him apart from, like, cookie cutter PvP builds, which is basically Burger King mask with heavy armor and a ninja flip ring. I wanted to do something a little more original than that, so I decided to make a character that could effectively wield all the Black Knight weapons and use the great, you know, use the Dragon Slayer's bow and all that neat stuff, just so I could do a lot of videos with that character rotating weapons. Ellie's very confined in her weapon choices being faith-based, so she's confined to sort of elemental weapons, which I think are a little boring particularly when she's not made to use elemental weapons um, all that effectively. So, <clears throat> this new character, well, it'll be a little different. It'll give me something to have a little more experience with. And I don't know why that's there. I, I don't know if that's misleading or if that's, like, 
Because I know I did this before, and I've done this a couple times on different characters, and I'm like, that seems like the wrong way to me. Um, sometimes people put signs down just to mislead players. You don't get anything out of that. It's not like they get experience for doing so. See, exactly. This is not at all the way you should go, as far as I can tell. Um, I think you have to go around a longer way, but, you know, whatever. I wish there was, like, a glitch or a hack or something I could use just once to see what is actually walkable. Just because I'm really curious as to the actual, like, what the actual path looks like. I can only use prism stones to sort of mark what is kind of the path. And the path to the slab is really annoying and dangerous, and I could be saving on prism stones if I was actually watching the drops from the sky and seeing where they fall. That would help me um, conserve my prism stones. But I brought 99 just to grab this thing, so I figured I might as well cash them in. The only thing I use them for is making like a little box to stand in in the um, kiln when I wait for people to invade, is to stand inside my little like prism stone blocks. Or to set down prism stones for every victory I get. I don't know. Just stuff like that. They're a goofy item, and they have their use, and they're definitely something everyone should carry around. But as I was saying, you know, my Black Knight build will have access to the Black Knight Act weapons, and most every weapon in the game, really, I don't, I don't know how many I'll wind up demoing in PvP, because you, know, you have to upgrade them to use them, and farming Titanite slabs to fully upgrade something to plus 15 is rather unfun. Uh, I wanted to speak about something. Someone had posted, and I think in my inbox, that they said they didn't know why I wasn't using elemental weapons, because elemental weapons, you know, quote-unquote, do more damage than regular weapons anyway, and they don't require a big stat investment, so... That's definitely an effective character build is to do a, you know, a gouged elemental build where you use an elemental weapon and just take your vitality up to like 80. Um, it's a very viable build. You see them all the time. Very popular build in PvP and they're posted online a lot. Great for PvE and PvP. All in all, pretty solid build. Um, but there's actually some downsides people don't realize and I want to share those quickly. The elemental gouge build is really effective, particularly at lower soul levels, but once you get up to the 120, 125 range, you actually do less damage than raw weapons. Like, so if I have a plus five black knight sword, for example, which by the way is a terrible weapon, but if I have a plus five black knight sword, you know, it hits for according to my stat screen, like, you know, a little over 400, even if I'm not statted with like the scaling, like if I don't pump strength or dexterity, if I just take it to like 20 and 18 and then upgrade it to plus 5 and don't really try to boost scaling on it, you know, it's like 400 to swingerish on the stat screen. And the elemental weapons on some of them do like 450 or something like that. So the question is, why would I not use an elemental weapon? Well, one is for style because elemental weapons just get lame really quick because they have no personality. But more so is the fact that I'm not sure if this is a patch 105 thing or if it was just just general balancing, but basically what happens is if you hit a player with a lightning weapon, it has to go through their physical and elemental defense, like it applies to both their lightning defense and their physical defense. So your actual damage you get will be far, far lower than what it might show you on the stat screen. And as a result, having pure damage of any kind is typically better. For example, that's why the Moonlight Sword is such a powerful weapon, because it's all magic damage. There's actually no physical damage. So as a result, you don't apply physical defense at all, and you just get to basically bamboozle people with, you know, an enormous, um, <coughs> excuse me, with an enormous sword that's all magic damage. It's, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Ellie's pretty excited that she managed to grab that slab. Most annoying item ever. So... Elemental weapons are great. Um, if you're going to use an elemental weapon, though, you pretty much have to have 70 plus vitality to justify making it worth your time. Or you're trying to do, like, soul level 50 or below PvP. Stuff like that. Um, but that'll be my next character build, is going to be a Black Knight sort of theme character. I'm going to try to try to use the Black Knight armor set, too, because I think that'd be classy to use in the kiln, the final passageway to Gwen, but... Uh, unfortunately, it might not happen. The set's pretty awful stat-wise, and doesn't even give me adequate poise for PvP. Like, I want PvP with under 55 poise, very rarely, so I'll probably have to, like, tweak it, but I'm definitely going to try to wear the chest piece alone. Uh, if nothing else, just to, just to fit theme, maybe the chest piece and the helm. I refuse to use any of the Burger King masks, though, because they look super lame. And I realize they're, of course, really good, but no way. They just look too bad, and 
I can't really justify using them. And now after another quick edit, we're finally on our way to Seath um, to finish him off. By the way, when you're going down that ramp there, there's a weird invisible wall that seems to push, or like a weird slide invisible wall thing. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it tends to push you towards the edge. And it's really dangerous because the rest of that walkway is basically safe. I don't think that's intentionally in the game. I think that's just screwed up. So that's something to watch out for and keep in mind. Uh, it's certainly not ideal, and I can't see any reason they put it in the game intentionally. Um, and after my Black Knight, I think the last character I'll probably wind up making for PvP will be a, a mage where I use a variety of different mage combinations. I wanted to cover my three bases where I did kind of like the Faith Utility Caster, then I did like the, um, if not the Faith, like Faith Caster, then I wanted to do Caster Caster, then I just wanted to do like Strength. There's so many character builds you can do in Dark Souls that are all viable. Um, I really should do another character just for the dex build. Maybe I will. It depends on what releases and what I wind up getting into. I really need to put up more Modern Warfare 3 content because a lot of people watch the channel for that. and I don't know, I'd, I'd hate to just kind of lose that entire audience of viewers. I don't think any of them transitioned over to Dark Souls real well. So I need to keep doing the two games and maybe get a third on here. Just so there's no more variety for you guys I and mean, for me. As much as I love Dark Souls, sometimes I get a little tired of it. Um, and of course, nothing's forced me to play Dark Souls. The big issue is just that I... I haven't found anything to really... No other game is really striking me. You know, a lot of people are saying, why aren't you playing Skyrim? Like, I have Skyrim on my PC, and I do play it from time to time, and I love the game. I've been a huge fan of the entire Elder Scrolls series, but I don't know. I just... I'm not in the mood for a big free roam game right now. I'm kind of into the action RPG genre, and I... If anyone knows any great action RPGs, let me know. I've already beaten The Witcher, so don't suggest that one. That one's all played out for me. Great game, though. If you're looking for a game kind of like Dark Souls with that action element, maybe a little heavier on the RPG story side, then I would hit up The Witcher. I basically need a game like Dark Souls that's a lot like Dark Souls but isn't Dark Souls. Um, a lot of people recommended White Knight Chronicles, but I I've tried that. Um, I don't think so. To me, White Knight Chronicles is basically just a big grind fest. I don't mind trying to grind for items, but like White Knight Chronicles, you could be grinding for like 42 hours plus on a character, and that's just like, no, that's that's MMO style for me at that point. And I, I can't play MMOs for that reason. So if anyone knows any good action RPGs that would be worth commentating and you know, have some kind of player versus player element, because I really like to verse other players in the games I do, even if it's like an afterthought like in Dark Souls, let me know. So that's my upcoming character builds on Dark Souls, some upcoming additional PvP footage from you know, all three different characters, no problem. Looking forward to it, just letting you guys know it's coming. Um, I think I pull this butterfly somehow. Normally you can grab that without pulling the butterfly, but I pull it, so I have to decide if I'm going to run or fight, and I'm kind of like, well, I might as well fight. Um, I have Great Magic Barrier, which basically makes me immune to its attacks. Uh, greater Magic Barrier gives you 90% immunity to all of its abilities. As you can see, that hardly even hurt me. Fortunately, these don't have enough range to hit it. The environment in the Crystal Cave very heavily favors the Moonlight Butterfly. Um, of course, I tried to walk out on a little alcove where the butterfly was resting, and I just walked off because I can't play the Crystal Caves worth crap. Um, <laughs> there's some edits, and I'm not going to mess with that butterfly this time. Basically, guys, any area in the game that encourages falling off of stuff, I hate. Tomb of the Giants, hate it. Blight Town, hate it. Crystal Cave, hate it. Although, at least the Crystal Cave is really pretty. Um, Tomb of the Giants isn't pretty at all. Uh, so, we're almost on the Seath fight, and I'm going to go quiet on the Seath fight. You guys are going to see me cheese, cheese him really bad. Like, it's practically going to be a non fight. Most of the fight will be spent trying to cut off his tail to get the Moonlight Greatsword, but otherwise, it's going to be no problem. Uh, I basically blow Seath out and kind of have a little fun with it. He's really easy to beat legitimately once you get his attack pattern down, which is basically if you go close, he will try to mash you with his tails, and if you're at range, he'll try to blow you out with magic. Um, in my case, he's just going to get Rolfle Stomp once I get his tail off. Um, and I, I intentionally wanted to show you guys uh, one of the... I think it's a really fun boss fight to do as a Faith Caster. I'm also unprepared to be in Crystal Cave with my weapon choices. Everything here is sort of resistant to magic weapons, and since faith damage is mostly magical, it's not really... A, it's a terrible place to 
to use that kind of stuff. So I'm using my backup show, which I made way earlier in the commentary series for PvP and stuff like that. It's always good to carry several backup weapons in your inventory, whether it be PvE or PvP, you know. Have a fire weapon, have a lightning weapon, um, have a weapon that scales your primary attribute, have a buffable weapon if you can. The more variety you get, the better. It just gives you more opportunity to be prepared for numerous situations. Having character builds that get 20 strength and 20 dex is great, just for the variety of weapons. I find myself tending to specialize a little more than that, but that's a great great way to do it. Um, strength gouge is also great, because you get access to heavy shields and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun with my strength gouge character on PS3. Um, Man Serpent Greatsword is a great strength weapon. I won't be doing any strength uh, builds on Xbox. Just kind of not interested in doing them on the Xbox. And of course, this time I accidentally pulled like three man-eater shells, four now. I've basically pulled the whole room, which is a big mistake. So I'm going to switch up the Wrath of God. So I'm sure someone will put a dislike or a hate on the comment because I'm using Wrath of Gods. Apparently that's unacceptable for PvP, PvP. It's just not an acceptable move to use. Uh, the community seems to hate it. I don't mind it even when it's used on me. Sometimes people catch me with it. It's fine. And of course, man-eater shells are also a great place to farm Twinkling Tantanite. That used to be a big deal, uh, but because in version 3 you actually couldn't buy Twinkling Tantanite, so if you had like Black Knight weapons and stuff like that, you could be spending a lot of time uh, grinding Twinkling Tantanite in the Crystal Cave or out a Great Salt Lake, but thankfully they patch it in so you can buy it from the giant blacksmith which I think was a great idea and this is the seat fight so that comes the end of the video for me um, I appreciate everyone watching I hope you're still enjoying the series it's coming to a close and soon will just be the PvP fest videos alright guys thanks for watching and take care